Hey guys, I'm Billy with Spectrain. Welcome back to the Spectrain YouTube channel and welcome back to the third episode of our Black Rifle series. We're diving in and trying to answer as many of your guys' questions as we can about AR-15 rifles. And today we're diving into muzzle devices and talking about those guys, giving you guys a basic idea, different kind of muzzle devices that are out there and what you might want to think about running on your rifle specifically. Now, to be clear, we're not going to be talking about suppressors today. That would be a whole separate video. We're talking about the actual muzzle devices that thread on the end of your barrel and uh, talking about the different kinds, answering some of your questions, and just giving you a basic overview of what's out there. So if you're completely unfamiliar, uh, what, you, what you probably have on your gun, uh, or, or you will get on your gun if you buy a basic AR-15, is this guy right here. This is the venerable A2 uh, flash hider. This is um, back from the M16 A2, if you will. That's why it's called the A2. And this is uh, the, the cheapest and probably most common muzzle device you're gonna find. But it's actually pretty solid, right? So this is a flash hider. So what it's primarily designed to do is mitigate the flash that comes out or the sort of ball of fire that comes out the end of your barrel if there's something on the end of it. It doesn't really matter what kind of gun it is. If it's a 22 or 12 gauge, it's, if you shoot it at night, you're going to see a big old ball of flame come out. And obviously there's some tactical disadvantages to that where you could potentially give away your exact position if they can see that flash through the end of your barrel. The A2 does a good job of mitigating that. It disperses the gases in a really effective way that minimizes any kind of flash coming from the end of your rifle when you are firing it. What a lot of people don't realize about the AR-15 A2 flash hider is that it's actually kind of a compensator as well. So I'm holding it right now where this guy is facing directly towards you and you can see all the ports uh, facing up towards the, the top of the rifle. If I flip this thing around towards the bottom, you'll see no ports. So the only place it is pushing gas is straight up and some to the sides as well, but primarily up from the bore which is going to, as I'm shooting this rifle, help keep the things flat and help keep it from jumping up, right? The, the gas is going in the opposite direction that the, the rifle wants to flip, if you will. It's gonna help it keep it flat and on target. So do not sleep on the A2 flash hider. It's actually a pretty solid muzzle device because it good, good, does a good job of not only compensating, I'm sorry, not only <laughs> hiding the flash, but also does a little bit of work there compensating the rifle for you as well. Now on the far opposite end of the spectrum, you have your kind of your brakes, right? This is another uh, naked rifle. I keep pulling these out because they have I have all kinds of rifles with random stuff on them. So this one's kind of naked. I apologize, it's not really built out, but it's got this muzzle device on it. This is the VG6, I believe it's the Gamma uh, muzzle device. And this is a brake, right? So you can see that the biggest ports of a hold up like this are through the sides, they're pushing gases out to each side of the muzzle device when it goes up. And then of course there's smaller ports in the top. So the entire point of a brake is to minimize not only muzzle rise or muzzle flip, but also felt recoil, make your rifle a little bit softer shooting. So the reason that the ports in the side are so much smaller than the ones in the top is you can really easily overdo the ones in the top, right? Because there's actually, with an Air 15, not a ton of muzzle rise to begin with. And if I put too much gas coming out the top of the front of my rifle, what can actually start to happen is as I shoot it, it gets pushed down with every shot. There are muzzle devices currently on the market that absolutely do that. They've overdone it, and I avoid those like the plague. So that's why the, the ports are smaller up here. The ones here on the side are pushing gas not only out to the side, but also kind of back to the rear a little bit, which helps, if you will, push the rifle forward, only it's not gonna actually drive it forward. It's just gonna take some of the punch off and help it not drive back into your shoulder quite so much um, through the, the, the clever use of sort of funneling, if you will, the gas in the, in the opposite direction that it would normally want to go. So these do a pretty good job and actually do make a big difference when you're shooting the rifle in felt recoil and in muzzle rise. There are some downsides too as well. Not only is this not a flash hider, it's actually gonna make that flash way worse. It's gonna send a massive ball of flame out the front of your rifle uh, in each direction from the front of this thing. As a matter of fact, with this particular mu uh, muzzle device on a short gun like this, it'll give you a ball of flame that's very typically visible in broad daylight. You will see it. Um, so if you're worried about that, that may be an issue. So of course the question arises, well, should I ever use something like this for a tactical or defensive use rifle? Well, uh, it depends on your use case, right? So in this example, if I'm in the military in Vietnam where the A2 came from, and I'm gonna be shooting at folks maybe across an open field or something, I don't necessarily wanna give my exact position away by having that flash going off. But if I'm setting this rifle up for home defense, 
um, it's pretty hard to imagine where I'm gonna care about someone seeing my flash. I'm not shooting at someone across a great distance. I'm shooting at someone down a hallway, through my front door, wherever the case may be. Um, and hiding my flash is probably the least of my concern. So in that case, if you're using your rifle in a situation where you care more about being fast and accurate than you do about flash, then sure, maybe this is the best thing for you. In addition to flash, the other thing this is gonna make way worse is the general, general concussion and sort of noise level from the rifle. Now, of course, it's not gonna make the gun louder. It can't do that. But what it's gonna make it seem is gonna make it appear way louder, not only to the shooter, but anyone who's around him, right? So if you've ever been downrange of a rifle like this when it was fired, you know that these guns are way louder downrange than they are, you know, where, behind the gun or to the sides. What the muzzle device does is directs not only the gas, but also the concussion to the sides, but also kind of to the rear as well. So to be honest, when I'm shooting this gun right here, it kind of feels like you're getting kicked in the teeth a little bit every time the gun goes off. Sure, the gun feels softer as far as the recoil of it, uh, but you feel that concussion kind of slapping in the face every time you shoot the gun, and all your buddies in the range are going to feel it as well, and it's going to seem insanely loud when you're shooting the gun. So that's definitely something to consider when you're thinking about running a break on your guns. There's a bunch of different breaks out there. This one's from VG6. Again, you can look at companies like Lantac and Surefire all have uh, brakes, do a good job of helping mitigate recoil on your rifle. So that's just one of those things where you have to figure out kind of what your priorities are. Um, do you want to have a gun that you can run really fast and accurate, or do you want something that's a little bit more pleasant to have out on the range? Now, a great hybrid solution there, we, we're not fully covering suppressors today, but a lot of these muzzle devices uh, are designed to be a break, but also accept a can over the top. So if I'm shooting with my buddies, I can throw a can on there, and then if I want to run in a competition or something, I can take it off and have the advantage of that muzzle device. So that's an option to be aware of as well. Now, between my brakes and my flash hiders is kind of a hybrid muzzle device, which uh, I like a lot. It's kind of somewhat similar to our last video uh, where we talked about hybrid devices and, and sort of between build and buy, there are these hybrid uh, muzzle devices as well. And this one in particular, I like a lot. This is the Surefire War Comp. And this comes with, this came on my Zevtech Corelite 16 inch rifle. Uh, but I've been running these for a very long time. And it is, is currently my preferred muzzle vice, device to run. You'll notice that my flash hider <laughs> up here looks very much like the A2. And that's because it, it shares a very similar design. And it does a lot of the same stuff. It does a good job uh, of, of disguising the flash from my rifle as well as compensating it a little bit. What you'll also notice, though, is these really small holes that are drilled along the top of this muzzle device. And that is sort of a, a, a hybrid brake system where not only is it, is it doing the same thing a flash hider does, but it's direct, directing a little bit more gas up to the top of this thing. But the way these holes are designed, it does it in such a way that it doesn't create a massive fireball when you're shooting uh, the rifle. So this is a fantastic hybrid where it's going to have a minimized flash, but help the gun be soft when you're shooting it. And because it's not so much a break, it's primarily directing the gases in such a way as to fight that muzzle rise, right? To keep it flat. It's not primarily focused in stopping the backward recoil, but the, the you know, the bottom line is, guys, these are 5.56 five, guns. The recoil isn't that bad. It's not knocking me over. But if I can get a little bit of help keeping this thing flat and keeping my sights on target more easily, I will take that every single time. And that's what this guy does a really good job of. So I like the, the War Comp is, uh, a lot. Now, there is a couple different versions of the War Comp. That is the closed tine version. If you start looking for War Comps, uh, you'll also probably find the open tine version. So this one's a little bit different. It has the same holes across the top, you'll notice. Uh, but the flash hider design is definitely a little bit different. You'll notice it's kind of a um, a three-prong design instead of a typical A2 design. Um, it, pretty similar in the way that it handles the flash, and, uh, and and the performance of it's pretty similar, I would say, in, in general. And, and as far as my very non-scientific experience uh, shooting both of them, I haven't noticed a major difference. The biggest difference, um, besides the aesthetic, is the length of it. So this one is about a good half inch, I would say, longer. You can actually probably see if I get this in the light the right way, where this kind of line is right here. And that's about where the closed time one stops. And but the, the open time one goes out a good bit further. Why is that important? Well, if I'm trying to fit this in a bag or I want a really small compact package, 
uh, I may want to think about going with the closed tine over the open tine so I can fit it in there well. If on the other hand, uh, maybe I'm trying to meet a barrel length requirement, like I'm running a 13.8 or 13.7, and I'm trying to put a muzzle device on here that's as long as possible, this is actually a good one to, uh, to think about to help you reach those measurements if you care about that stuff or if you're in some kind of a situation where you have to care about that kind of stuff. Um, the open tine uh, war comp is definitely one of the longer muzzle devices currently on the market, so that may come in handy for you. Uh, now, let's a brief discussion, something you'll run into uh, when you start looking at um, more performance muzzle devices. When you look at your uh, normal flash hiders, this is a barrel that's been taken off, um, and this is an interesting point. So this is a Daniel Defense flash hider. This is not an A2. Now, Daniel Defense doesn't make any particular wild claims about their flash hiders, but uh, there's a number of flash hiders out there on the market that are not A2s that tend to be a lot more expensive. Um, do not feel like you need to go upgrade your A2 to some other flash hider that's out there. Um, they all pretty much do the exact same thing, and, you'll, and you can even just tell by looking at it like it's, it's designed very much the same way. But all the flash hiders, for the most part, are installed with a crush washer, which is this. You may not be able to really tell, but in between the muzzle device and the barrel is this thick black washer right there. And that thing is designed to actually be kind of compressed and squeezed a little bit when you tighten on this muzzle device. So what you generally do is take up all the slack, if you will, when you're screwing that muzzle device onto the barrel, get it down to where it's nice and snug, and you just over tighten it a little bit to where it is lined up on the barrel the way that you want it. And that's where the crush washer kind of works. However, with any kind of brake or more performance muzzle device, it's gonna require being timed. So in this case, we don't have a thick black washer. We've got these little thin silver guys down here, and those are not crush washers. Those are normal flat washers that do not compress. So it's not like a war comp is gonna come with, you know, maybe 12 or so different washers that are all slightly different thicknesses and can be stacked together in different ways. And you have to do some experimentation to stack those together in a way that you can torque this muzzle device down correctly and it just happens to land exactly where you want it. It can be a little bit of a challenging process, but there's a decision to make there, which is how do you want to time this thing? So we use the term timing to talk about how we want our muzzle device rotated around the axis of the bore. If I use a, like a 12 o'clock or a neutral time, what that means is that I'm balancing these ports around the center axis of the bore so that they are, on average, directing the gas straight up. And the, the, the overall effect is that as I shoot the rifle, it's helping the rifle come straight down. I don't have to do it that way, though. I could time it, we call right hand. If I time it right hand, I'm probably not going straight up and down with it. I'm canting it over to the right. The reason for that is that your average right-handed shooter, when they're shooting a rifle, their rifle tends to jump up into the right as they're shooting. And if I time my muzzle device over to the right a little bit to direct more gases up into the right, it's going to push the rifle down into the left when I'm shooting, which is going to help keep my muzzle flat and on target while I'm shooting. So is this a good idea? Um, I am not going to come out with guys with a hard and fast statement and say you should never right hand or left hand time your muzzle devices, but you, I don't recommend it. I don't. Um, in my opinion, you should not just resign yourself to the idea that your muzzle is always going to jump up into the right when you shoot your rifle. You should probably fix that. And it's primarily fixed through good recoil control. Um, you should get to, to a point, if you come out to one of our classes, where we're able to get your rifle to where it's coming just straight up a little bit. Every time you shoot the rifle, there's kind of, and eventually to the point where it's just kind of wiggling on target, but it definitely shouldn't be jumping way over to the right every time you shoot the gun. So if you're employing proper technique, there really shouldn't be much of a reason to time the rifle significantly to the right. The, the other thing to consider there is if I ever did need to switch hands for some reason, regardless of what your you know, kind of tactics there are, um, if I'm trying to shoot a rifle left-handed that is right-hand timed, now I'm really in trouble <laughs> because my gun is going to really be one to kick to the left every single time I shoot it. Now, you may be saying, hey, I don't believe in switching shoulders for CQB or working around barricades or whatever, and that's cool. But there's certainly scenarios you can think of, right, where you might be injured or, or build the scenario out that you want to in your mind where you might have to shoot the rifle left-handed. Like there, there, there is reasonable scenarios where that's a consideration. And if you have an opposite-tuned, uh, timed rather muzzle device that can get you in a little bit of trouble 
Um, maybe even if you have to hand the rifle off to your buddy to use that is, uh, is wrong-handed or, or handed the opposite way from you, uh, rather. Um, it, it's going to cause them problems if, if the muzzle device is timed the wrong way. So my recommendation, if you don't have a strong uh, way to do it already, is to just time those neutral and then fix your recoil control behind the gun. Fix that platform behind the gun to where you're not giving it an easy way out uh, one way or another. So that's just a basic overview, guys, of some of the main categories of muzzle devices that I'd recommend you take a look at and think about and some considerations, some pros and cons for the different ones. I hope it was helpful. Uh, I think we've spent enough time on it today, but if you have further questions, let me know. If we do a follow-up video, we certainly will. And in the meantime, we'll see you on the next one.